It's Mario Day, at least it is when this video goes out, and we figured there was no better way to celebrate than to check out a classic that you can play right now as part of your Nintendo Switch Online Plus Expansion Pass subscription, Super Mario 64. We're taking a look at the version included with the subscription, not the 3D All-Stars version, for two reasons. One, this video sticks to our channel rules of reviewing subscription games, and two, this is the version where Mario says If you like what we do here, consider subscribing. And with that, we're here to let you know if Super Mario 64 is still worth your time after all these years. <laughs> One thing we're going to talk a lot about in this review is how well this game has aged since 1996. Sure, a lot of stuff here is dated by today's standards, but these things remain tightly designed and fun in 2023. Mario still controls like a dream, and a lot of good design choices were made in his shift to 3D. We've got our standard moveset of run, jump, double jump, triple jump, ground pound, backflip and dive, but now Mario can also punch and kick which makes dispatching enemies in the 3D space much simpler. This moveset is backed by some seriously tight controls. Donkey said it best when he said that Mario 64 is still dancing around modern games. But what good are solid controls without great level design? There aren't a lot of levels in Mario 64, but each one is carefully thought out and littered with mysteries and secrets, and that all starts with the hub world, Peach's Castle. I remember this place being much bigger as a kid, but even today, there are so many secrets to discover that it gives the world a lot of depth. There's always a surprise to be found, and this extends to the levels themselves. Each level in the game encourages some sort of exploration, and the choice to make most stars available anytime you hop into a level is a great one. Right out the gate, bob on Battlefield gives you a big mountain to climb, but on your way up you'll see this caged star, and it piques your imagination. How do I get in there? Womp Fortress just has this caged star in the air, and it's up to you to find a way up there. The game is constantly rewarding you for exploring the levels and thinking of interesting ways to achieve your goals, and it makes the world feel greater than the sum of its parts. Even the water levels are good, that's how you know that this here is a masterpiece. You also have tangible effects on certain levels, like the first time you visit Jolly Roger Bay, you need to drain this ship, and then the next time you go back, the ship is on the water as a new area to explore for the Red Coin Star. I also really love the choice to have some more platforming specific sections in the Bowser levels, these are your chance to really test your skills with Mario's moveset. Your goal in each level is to grab a star, and you're given a small clue in the title as to where that star will be. Again, this choice facilitates exploration, but you're never tied to grabbing the star you selected in the menu. That caged star we mentioned earlier? Well, you can grab it at any time, if you know what to do. Once you grab a star, you are kicked out of the level, and whilst I can see the frustration here, I like the concept. Instead of getting railroaded into a single level to grab all the stars in one go, the game pulls you out, says, hey, let's try something different, and gives you the freedom to go off. We've got this far and sung Mario 64's praises, but there is one issue with the gameplay, and the severity of this issue will vary from person to person. For me, it was an annoyance, but not big enough to knock a point off. You know it, I know it, we're talking about the camera. The implementation here is a stroke of game design genius. Back in 1996, Nintendo needed to teach a generation of gamers how a 3D camera worked, so they made it a physical being. Lakitu is filming Mario's whole journey, and this contextualises the camera in a great way. In practice, this is mostly fine. The camera follows Mario nicely, and gives you, the player, plenty of space to see what's going on. The problem comes when you need to manoeuvre the camera in a specific manner. Lakitu is a physical entity, he cannot phase through walls, and moves at set angles. Which means that when you can't see anything in this stupid pyramid in Shifting Sandland, Lakitu isn't going to be able to move for you. It's the sort of issue that isn't present 95% of the time, but goes from 0 to 100 real quick. I'd also like to quickly touch on the flying controls, as these were the only ones that felt a bit weird. Mario is still nice and responsive in the air, but the movement combined with the camera makes everything feel a bit wonky. 
I could just not get the hang of it. Overall, Mario is still on top after almost 30 years. The gameplay here is just wonderful, Mario is a joy to control, and every level in the game is a gem of design and discovery. Even a fiddly camera isn't enough to knock a point off, because everything else has aged like a fine wine. Mario 64 gets a crisp 5 out of 5 for gameplay. Mario may be looking a bit sharp and simple in his old age, but what's lacking in technical fidelity is more than made up for in animation, environment design and music. I'm going to start with music, which I don't usually do, because this score is so simple, yet so well put together. Peach's castle theme feels royal, Bob on Battlefield's backing track kicks off the game with that glorious Mario charm and energy, the music for Cool Cool Mountain feels like you're going to fall into snow from your living room somehow, and that water theme is pure bottled nostalgia. I once went scuba diving, and that theme invaded my head the entire time I was underwater. Pure magic. Stemming on, sound design is really well done. Mario sounds like he's having just as much fun as me when he moves around, birds chirp outside of Peach's castle, explosions sound massive, and jumping into paintings feels magic. Again, small elements add up to much more than the sum of their parts. Mario's movement animations are kind of mind-blowing in their fluidity. Everything here just flows really well, and it makes the gameplay feel that much more responsive and fun. That triple jump front flip just didn't need to be there, but it adds so much extra flair. When Mario gets set on fire, he really acts like it. He even has extra idle animations. So much care was put into making Mario look good whilst he moves, on top of playing well. These fluid animations also do a lot to relieve the simple character models present in the game. Mario may be looking a little sharp in the face, but he's smooth as butter when he moves. Similarly, enemies are technically limited, but always have clear designs and solid effects. Art direction always reinforces gameplay in Mario 64. Environment design is simple but there's a lot of care taken to make levels feel distinct. Womp Fortress feels like a fortress, Shifting Sandland feels like an expansive desert, even though both levels aren't that big in reality. There's also plenty of interior environments with their own unique designs to add some variety in both looks and gameplay. In-game UI is very functional over form in design, but as I always say when this crops up, this is never a bad thing, just an uninteresting one. The menu UI is fun, you can play with Mario's face, and everything is nice and colourful. We don't judge art direction on pure looks, that's why it's called art direction and not graphics. We're looking at how the look of the game facilitates gameplay, and in this case, how well everything is aged. Sure, the models here do look a bit rough, but the care was taken to keep animations smooth and interesting. Levels create a great environment, even in their simplicity and the game is elevated with a fantastic score. That's why Mario 64 nets a 5 out of 5 for art direction. The story here is that Bowser has kidnapped Peach, and you need to go rescue her. Shocker, I know. Mainline Mario games have always been gameplay vastly over-narrative, with the exception of Galaxy, Mario 64 is no different, but there are some fun character moments peppered in. Like when you give this penguin the wrong kid, or how this penguin gets mad at you for cheating in the race. You can talk to the toads and the friendly bob -ombs. even signs are written in a fun way. These things all add some fun detail to the world, but the narrative here exists first and foremost to put gameplay first. In the end, Mario was unfortunately not pushing the boat out with narrative, but this wasn't a bad choice for this type of game. We're giving Mario 64 a 3 out of 5 for narrative, an average score for a well-intentioned, but average offering. Mario 64 is a solid content offering, but you need to take it as it comes in terms of settings. We also had some technical issues. I had a lot of game stutter, I'm not sure if this is an issue with the emulator the Switch uses, or the version of the game it's running but it was present and it was annoying. The game is actually losing a point for this issue because it was so frequent, especially at the start of the game, and this is an issue that ruins the feel of the game. 
content wise, you're getting 15 stages to explore, plus Peach's Castle and a few Bowser fights, all chock full of secrets. There are 120 stars to find. You do get 4 save slots in game and an additional 4 suspense slots with the emulator. Settings wise, you can change your sound between stereo, mono and headphones. That's it. And yeah, it was 1996, but if you want to change anything here, you're just out of luck. If you're like me and have trouble with inverted cameras, you're just gonna have to get used to it. The subtitles in the game are pretty awful, mainly due to the font choice. Subtitles do have text boxes and advance with a button press, so you can take your time to read them, but I did have some trouble with the font. Overall, Mario 64 is getting a 4 out of 5 for specs due to the technical issues we encountered. Usually we'd come down super hard on an extreme lack of settings like this, but with older games, age is a factor, and outside of some subtitle options and a choice to un-invert the camera, there aren't a lot of settings that I was craving. The great amount of content and how polished it all is outside of the stuttering are what keeps the score nice and high. <laughs> It's going to take you around 10 hours to beat the main game of Mario 64, and about 20 hours for 100% completion. This is a nice length whilst not being overbearing, either way you slice it. Hard drive footprint is nice and small at 964 megabytes. This is for the full N64 catalogue available on Switch currently. You can't download the games separately, but the whole collection really doesn't take up much space and is a nice quick download. You get the option to save any time you grab a star, and each star can be grabbed in around 5 to 15 minutes. It's really easy to hop in, grab a few stars, or play through the whole game in one go. Play sessions can be nice and varied, and Mario 64 can easily be fit into any amount of free time. If you do lose all of your lives, you just get booted out of Peach's castle, you don't lose any progress, you just have to run back to the level you were at, which doesn't take very long. Simply put, my time never felt wasted with Mario 64, and it finishes off the review nice and strong with a 5 out of 5 on our commitment scale. Mario 64 is worth your time. Obviously, it's Mario 64. Even almost 30 years later, this game is still a joy to play. Gameplay that stands the test of time this long is truly something special. If you've never played this, you're missing out, and if you have, there's no better time for a nostalgia trip. Before we go, we'd just like to remind everyone as well that that eel is still the scariest thing in gaming. 